My dear students, Dr. Ashfaq Aur here and as you are well aware, I have authored books for NEET PG, NEET DM, NEET MCH as well as some of the books for USABLE examinations, MRCP examinations and my lectures would be intended to get you right on the top there for your next examinations, DM examinations, MCH examinations, MRCS, MRCP, USABLE examinations. I hope my videos will benefit a lot. I will be presenting my things in a very easy, simple and palatable form for you. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot. My dear students, today I will be taking up a topic from surgery and the topic is adult polycystic kidney disease. And this is a topic of immense importance and lot many questions are asked in your surgery examinations in your neat pg examinations in your urology examinations from this topic so as far as the adult polycystic kidney disease is concerned you have to remember certain important facts about this disease now you can have a look at the picture and you can well see that this is a normal kidney over here you can well appreciate the cortex and the medulla but over here you can see that the substance of the kidney is replaced by cysts and basically what these cysts do they just replace the normal parent chyma they replace the normal functioning renal tissue as a result of which a person or a patient with long-standing cystic disease can land into chronic renal insufficiency so it is very important to recognize this condition at a very early stage now what is the mechanism by which these cysts develop sometimes it is genetically predisposed because there are certain important factors in embryogenesis as far as embryogenesis is concerned you have to remember that the kidney develops in multiple phases and there is this combination of the secretory element with the conducting part and in case anything wrong goes in the fusion of the secreting and the collecting part there the problem starts and there is the formation of the cyst the development of cyst which can appear at a very early stage and which can appear at a later stage here we are not dealing about the child polycystic kidney disease that's a different entity here we are dealing with the adult polycystic kidney disease but the basic embryological basis is laid at a very early stage now that is one important thing basically what happens there's an alteration in the cell to cell signaling and cell to matrix signaling and there are certain genes like the pkd1 and pkd2 gene and the pkd1 gene lies on chromosome 16 and the pkd2 gene lies on chromosome 4. in addition these are the more predominant genes involved in the development of polycystic kidney disease and there is a influence of other factors as well there is this ace gene number one and there is the cftr gene number two and there is this tsc gene tuberous sclerosis complex 2 gene which just play a facilitating role in the development of the cysts so this is very important as far as the polycystic kidney is concerned so there is a genetic predisposition a genetic tendency and this can be accelerated by multiple factors and there can be something wrong in the signal transduction mechanisms and abnormal signaling leads to the formation of the cysts now this shows an ultrasound of cysts within both the kidneys so these are the cystic cavities in the kidneys now well demonstrated over here this is a ct scan and you can see the kidneys and these are the cysts multiple cysts the kidney almost is replaced by the cystic tissues so cysts over here cysts over all the places and there is very less of a functioning re renal parenchyma left over here so this is a ct scan of the polycystic kidney disease now so these are uh, some of the factors over here number one so pkd1 gene pkd2 and GANAP is another gene as i mentioned pkd1 gene is on chromosome 16 a question quite frequently asked which chromosome and which gene so this is chromosome 16 and chromosome 4. now as i mentioned that there can be these mutated proteins are involved in abnormal cell differentiated polarization proliferation and membrane transport 
Now, what is important, what leads to the development of the cysts is that there is increased fluid retention within the lumen. That is the first important thing. And second, there is increased cellular proliferation of the epithelial lining. So once there is increased cellular proliferation of the epithelial lining, that leads to the development of a cyst. And then there is accumulation by virtue of increased fluid retention. And this is the basic cause of the development of the cysts anywhere in the body and more so over here in the polycystic kidney disease. So this is important. Now, how does a person present? Uh, it may remain uh, completely silent or a patient may present with dull flank pain or he or she may present with hypertension or may present hematuria in addition to proteinuria. So these are some of the things how a patient presents as a case of polycystic kidney disease. Now, in addition to that, you have to remember this polycystic kidney disease is not important because the cysts are seen just in the kidney. And once you have a patient with polycystic kidney disease, you have to just go and do a clinical examination and other tests as well because this can be associated with cysts at other places as well very important so you can be having cysts within the pancreas you can be having cysts within the lung in the spleen in the pineal gland and the spinal vesicle more so in case of pancreas lungs and spleen so you have to do an ultrasound preliminary ultrasound or other diagnostic modality technique by which you can just visualize the cysts in these body cavities as well this is something you have to remember that polycystic kidney disease is associated with cysts at other places as well what can this polycystic kidney disease be associated with certain other features as well yes definitely there has been a correlation with certain patients presenting with acute and severe collapse and they are the patients who can have subarachnoid hemorrhage sah as a result of rupture of berry aneurysms berry aneurysms which are aneurysms mostly in the anterior circulation of the circular villus here in these aneurysms can, can go unnoticed and they can cause a catastrophe by virtue of rupturing big berry aneurysms rupturing and a patient with polycystic kidney disease can present with subarachnoid hemorrhage so you have to remember this important associate quite frequently asked in super specialty examinations so berry aneurysm in action I told you about the cysts in the liver. Liver is one important organ in which the cysts are present along with the cysts in the kidney. So polycystic liver as well. Now, in addition to that, we can be having in the same liver, liver von Meinberg's complexes. And these are nothing to worry about or also these are the associations. In action, one important thing is that you can be having aortic aneurysms very rarely rupture of the aortic aneurysms in which a patient can present with rupture of the aneurysm again a catastrophic incident which can occur in patients with polycystic kidney disease so over here you have to be very careful of at least screening for the berries aneurysms and the aortic aneurysms in action very important from a gi perspective is the presence of intestinal diverticula the diverticular disease is very common in patients of polycystic kidney disease one important association is hepatic fibrosis that is very important as far as the polycystic kidney disease is concerned so you have to remember all these associations a question very frequently asked now as far as the management of the polycystic kidney disease is concerned you have to just follow uh, the patient and you have to do a repeated follow-up of the cysts by any vascular diagnostic technique ultrasound ct and they can just reveal the growing size of the cysts or any transformation of the cyst and that's very important to manage and first and secondly you have to manage the blood pressure of the people and those especially who are having blood pressure and in case of patients having repeated infections so you have to control these two modalities dp and infection and you have to monitor for the renal functions uh, over a continuous period of time and regularly now is there anything which just has got an effect on the progression of the disease just yes, one drug is there which has ha which has been found to have a modifying effect on the disease activity and that is tolvaptan and that is a vasopressin 2 receptor antagonist and this is the one drug which is currently used and recommended for the patients 
of adult polycystic kidney disease to slow the progression towards some sort of renal failure. Uh, are there any other? Yes, as far as theoretical possibilities are concerned, you can be having EG FR inhibitors as well as tyrosine kinase receptor inhibitors. And two important tyrosine kinase receptors. These tyrosine kinase receptors are very important as far as management of CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, as far as renal cell carcinoma and psoriasis are concerned. But here in two drugs, bocetinib and desivatinib are used specifically for this condition over here. And EGFR inhibitor like paclitaxel is used for the treatment and management of a very specialized center of this clinical entity. So these are some of the very and the most recent facts about the adult polycystic kidney disease. I hope that you will revise all these important points about adult polycystic kidney disease and this will tremendously help you in your exams. Thanks a lot.